We're gonna do it again. We're gonna have to do it again. Yes, slash, slash, slash. Off, off. It's a draw. 34. Four. 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 Goes across the middle, caught! Cutting back, going to the corner! Breaks another tackle, he's caught! He's caught! He's gone to 30, he's at 20! Down the sideline, he is gonna go all the way! He has some open field, still out of speed at the five, still going to the goal line! Smith is on, he's gone all the way for a touchdown! Rob, are they holding you? 40 bases all over. Don't Come on, don't lose your poise out here. Don't lose your poise. Joe, don't get in any fights out there. Hey, Ricky, come here, I want to tell you something. Come here, now listen to me real quick. I don't care. I'll tell you, you get in a fight, and you get thrown out of the stairs, you're going home for good, okay? Just so you know. Come on, right here we win it, man. Right on the front lines. Right in the middle is where we win it. Right here is where we find out whether we're champs. Go right at him. Get the ball to the 40. The one is score. One, two, three, score. Now get out of here. And over Koye. He passed the 10. An incredible run by the Nigerian nightmare. Farrell, great lead block. Steven straight slow. Up the right sideline. Still on his feet. Touchdown. Coming in. He's looking. He's going to run. He jumped. He fell. Complete to Gibbons. Leaps into the end zone. Silver slot. Touchdown, Oliver. He dives in. Touchdown. Has time. He's going to air it out. He's got Sanders caught at the five. Touchdown. Well, what a catch by Ricky Sanders. You can't get any better than that. Perfect play. Hi, I'm Steve Sable of NFL Films. And I can say with certainty that the road to the Super Bowl covers 500 miles. That's how much film we shoot every season. And while this makes for a long journey, it also makes for an exciting one, filled with unexpected twists and turns and detours and, of course, shattering collisions. It's a rough ride, but this year marks the 10th year that we've produced Road to the Super Bowl, and every road has been unique. Now, 1989 will be remembered as the year that the Dallas Cowboys took the field without Tom Landry as their head coach, and the NFL conducted business without Pete Rozelle as its commissioner. 1989 will also be remembered as perhaps the greatest year in league history for closely contested games. Nearly half the games played were decided by seven points or less. One in every four games was decided by three points or less. Every weekend was a thriller. And there were a lot of thrilling performers who left a lasting impression on the road to the Super Bowl. The imposing figures that shaped pro football's landscape during 1989 included a running back who covered lots of territory. The Chiefs' Christian Okoye toppled tacklers and topped the NFL in rushing yardage. And off, it's Okoye, slashing his way past the 10, breaks a tackle, high, he calls it, touchdown! 
trying to stop the 250-pound ball-carrying behemoth known as the Nigerian Nightmare was a terrifying task that induced cold sweat and extreme exhaustion. Are you okay? Yeah. 100%? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Hand off of Koye. He's past the 10. He's past the 5. He chucks it. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Well, he is too big and too fast to be playing running back in the NFL. Number 20 Barry Sanders was built much lower to the ground than Okoye. But the 5-foot, 8-inch Detroit rookie was also a towering talent. This compact model sparkled in every NFL showroom he appeared in, and his ability to shift gears in heavy traffic made him the NFC's leading rusher. Sanders and Okoye provided fans with good reason to watch the ground, but 1989 was also a season for keeping the eyes on the skies. It was the year of the receiver, and when pass catchers weren't blasting off in a blaze of glory, they were crashing to earth in a ball of fire. Explosive pass defenders were rarely outmuscled, but they were often outmaneuvered by elusive pass catchers. Scott's got to put it up. Big Ben right. No, he throws it across the middle. Carrier's got the short route to the 50. Carrier to the far side to the 40. Carrier to the 35 to the 30. Carrier down the sideline. Carrier's going to go. What a play! Touchdown! Is that incredible? Jack drops straight back. Looks. Looks. Throws to the sideline. It's caught by Ryzen. Ryzen is hit. Struggles, try to get back, reverses, comes to the near side, breaks it back up the sideline, out of bounds, touchdown! He didn't go out of bounds, Ryzen scores! With fine receivers at his fingertips, Don Mikowski showed a magic touch, and the Green Bay Packers materialized into one of the NFL's most exciting teams. Their quick striking, quick thinking offense possessed an uncanny knack for transforming trauma into triumph. Here's Mikowski back to throw. On a blitz, comes over the middle, it is caught, and that is Jeff Query. He fumbles the ball, and the Packers serving sharp picks it up, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown! Behind magical Don Mikowski and marvelous Sterling Sharp, the pack made history by winning four one-point games. That is big time! Big time performances typified a campaign that saw 20 NFL pass catchers total over 1,000 yards receiving, more than in the previous two seasons combined. It's only fitting that the year of the receiver should mark the swan song for the remarkable Steve Largent, who became pro football's all-time leader in receiving touchdowns. Straight back to pass, throw from big, now looks close to the end zone. There it is! It's touchdown Seahawks, number 100! While one pair of great hands enabled Steve Largent to set records, two pair of great hands helped the Los Angeles Rams reach the playoffs. Number 83, Willie Flipper Anderson, and Henry Ellard, number 80, formed a talented tandem that enabled the Rams to score more points than any team in the NFL except San Francisco. The Rams 
and stylish offense typified a region known for setting fashion trends. But this was a streaky team that won its first five games, then was stopped cold in their next four. Eventually, the Rams regained altitude. Flipper Anderson's NFL single game record of 336 receiving yards helped LA beat the Saints. Six wins in their final seven contests thrust the Rams into the wild card playoff round against the Eagles. While the defense frustrated Philadelphia, the offense followed head coach John Robinson's deceptively simple offensive game plan. Hey, hey, do something good this time, will A pair of first period touchdowns paved the way for a 21 to seven victory. Give me some, Bobby, give me some, Bobby. Then the Rams' third straight East Coast trip took them to the Meadowlands, where they assumed a 7-6 halftime lead over the Giants. Everett back to throw on first down, sets and looks with time. Fires from the left corner, caught by Flipper Anderson, and in for the touchdown. You're an ass kicker, baby. You're an ass kicker. But regulation time ended with a score deadlocked at 13 apiece. Then, in sudden death, the Rams revived their sputtering offense and took wing to the final four. Run, run. Okay. Back to throw, and Brissett fires up the right side for Flipper Anderson. Caught for the touchdown, and the Rams win it. Flipper Anderson beat the coverage up the sideline and caught it, a 30-yard strike, as the Rams win it on head for the NFC Championship against the 49ers. For the 1989 Los Angeles Rams, the aerial route proved to be the smoothest and surest way to travel the road to the Super Bowl. Not everyone is cut out to be an NFL head coach. While a departed Tom Landry achieved larger-than-life status, others were lucky to maintain an even keel. Some coaches went down in 1989. But there were those who rose to the occasion. Lindy Infante led the Packers to their best record since 1972. And while Art Shell restored pride and poise to the Raiders, Marty Schottenheimer was revitalizing the Chiefs. Refuse to be blocked. Refuse to be blocked, whether it's one guy, two guys, refuse to be blocked. And then you'll get it done. Now let's go. charging styles of Christian Okoye and the AFC's top-rated defense reflected Schottenheimer's no-nonsense approach. Rob, are they holding you? Don't let them hold you! Yes, sir. Don't let them hold you! Where's your sense of humor? We got really My works. sense of humor hey, really is during works. the week, not on Sunday. No, really Every coach's sense of humor disappeared with the snap of the ball. While follies like this amused the fans, the coach whose job was on the line saw mistakes as no laughing matter. is crazy and throughout the years no coach has been driven crazier than Chicago's volatile Mike Ditka 
<laughs> See that? That's your IQ, buddy. Zero. Hold up. Hold up. Turn over. Son. No, I'd rather talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you get the I know, I know I'm smarter than that. <laughs> the dismal 1989 Bears at Ditka Fuman. And like many coaches, he fired his best broadsides in the press room, as well as on the playing field. We stink. We are absolutely a, an atrocious football team at this point right now. I don't know if we're capable of winning another football game. I don't think we are at this point. Well, the offense in the third quarter. The offense was terrible. Time. Yeah, the offense wasn't there because the offense didn't have the ball in the third quarter. Why so much running on first down? At what point of the game, dear? You don't know when it's good or bad. You really don't know because you don't know what we're trying to do. You guys don't look at the films. You don't know what happened. You really don't know. You think you know, but you don't know. And you never will. We can't be responsible for the blocking. We can't be responsible for the guys jumping offside. We can't be responsible for We get down there and, and, uh, and it was a dumb play by, by Anderson. I love, I love Anderson, but it was a dumb play when he had when his foot was uh, shoe was coming off up the line screen we were hard and take time out we had a trap play called and, 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 his, and his shoe comes off be realistic if you had a bounty uh, why in the hell would you put it on a kicker it's been the six week slump and you hope he don't get hurt you want to be sure he kicks i mean hell don't touch him be careful Oh, oh, I would have said something to Buddy, but he wouldn't stand on the field long enough. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. I resent that. I've been on a diet. I lost a couple of pounds, and I thought I was looking good. And then he, <laughs> he goes and uh, calls me fat. I kind of resent that a little bit. Now, first of all, you're going to ask me what I thought of the call last week on Frank Warren? God. <laughs> Along with reporters and rivals, referees brought out the caustic nature of a head coach. I tell that official he's very helpful. You stand there like a statue. He's the first year official. You know what? Was he from college? I hate them college guys. That's all right. I hate them. Was he a bull of bull official? <laughs> uh -huh. Is he a college well, official? Well, he's a, he's a first year man. He's just starting Would you to bring him over to me, please? Well, well, Let me talk to the college guy. I hate college guys. Okay. This isn't college. You're not at a home I, I, I understand. This is the NFL, which stands for not for long when you make them calls. Yeah. I'll be selling Go. groceries. No, no! Huck, no! You're talking about a nothing! No way! No way! This damn foot there! No way! Replay! 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 We'd like a replay! Can we get the replay, please? Where's the replay? Who's in charge of the replay? Stop the clocks! Do something and get the replay! Can we get a replay on it? What about a replay? Here it is right here. Touchdown, Jimmy! It's a touchdown! It's a get back. After further review, the play stands as called. Double sink, one take. Lucky, you're lucky. It's the first time you've been right in five years. Hey, Roy, that's two calls you give him down there now. His both of his knees are down. We can see the TV too. They looked at it close, evidently. Uh, the pass interference was hard, and this one was hard. The, the fleeting thrill that you get from accomplishment in most cases offsets all of the trouble that you go through to accomplish. Bill Parcells accomplished wonders with a team that lost key players to injury and retirement. With a combination of old pros and young Turks, the Giants won the NFC Eastern Division Championship. Parcells instilled desire and discipline in a rebuilding team that required a firm hand. Hey, Ricky, come here, I want to tell you something. Come here, now listen to me real quick. You're trying to cut me now. I don't care. I'll tell you, you get in a fight and you get thrown out of this game, you're going home for good, okay? Just so you know. The success of the New York Giants demonstrates why men like Bill Parcells persevere at a job where winning can't be achieved without sacrifice. Okay, fellas? Hey, fellas, this is what you work all off-season for. This is why you lift all them weights. This is why you do all that Settle down, we gotta come back and win the game now. Man, this is where you win the game, right here. If we can get a first down, the game's over. Oh, boy. 
This is big. Hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry. You better hurry. If you're ever going to get a blitz, this is it right here. If you're ever going to get one, this is it. Come on after us, come on after us, you son of a Blitz out. Blitz out. Ah, they're not going to do it. Reverse! Oh, great, we got it. There it is. coach who traveled the road to the Super Bowl in 1989, there were moments that made this difficult journey worthwhile. You want that big play stuff, don't you? I want it. Throughout 1989, it seemed that nearly every team in the NFL suffered a slump, a cold spell, then rebounded with a hot streak. Now, this made for an intense and highly competitive race to New Orleans. In fact, going into the final weekend of the regular season, a record 17 teams were still alive for the playoffs. It was a, a crazy season of ups and downs, and the downs weren't necessarily deadly, and the ups didn't always guarantee ultimate victory. This year belonged in a padded cell. It was filled with things that, uh, that just didn't make sense. And nowhere was the bizarre nature of this year more evident than in the AFC Central. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the AFC Central Division Symphony, conducted by Maestro Charles Noel. Central had reason to be pleased with their performance in 1989. AFC! 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 What other division had a quartet of quarterbacks named Bubby, Boomer, Bernie, and Moon? It sounded like a law firm. Bernie Kosar of the Cleveland Browns was an expert at cross-examining a defense. Boomer Esiason of the Cincinnati Bengals specialized in the really big trials. Warren Moon of the Houston Oilers defended the inmates in the House of Pain. And junior partner Bobby Brister handled the small claims of the Pittsburgh Steelers. For several seasons, rivalry in the AFC Central had been growing more intense, involving every coach and each city. Will the next person that sees anybody throw anything onto this field, point them out, or get them out of here? You don't live in Cleveland, you live in Cincinnati. That guy over there, he, will not talk he doesn't have a friend in the world. <laughs> we don't and after that. watching you people, I don't think I do either. <laughs> the head coaches were a diverse group as well. Fun-loving Jerry Glanville in Houston, and Cincinnati suddenly serious Sam Weish. Cleveland's nearly anonymous Bud Carson, who at 58 was a rookie head coach in the NFL, and Pittsburgh's legendary Chuck Knoll, winner of four Super Bowls, but not an easy man to know. And I think the respect is there, but it's not a friendship. It's not a, uh, a thing where everybody enjoys each other's company. You gotta fight. Scrap, you gotta defend yourself. People wonder why you play like this over here, because the other team will kill you. They'll hit you in the mouth. If you don't hit them back, they're gonna hit you twice next play. Even Cincinnati's joined in. Where they used to be finesse and skill, and now they're even fighting back. And the three most penalized teams are right here. All in AFC Central. We have the legal formation, the offense was not set. We have 12 men on the defense. We have a personal foul roughing the quarterback defense. And we have a personal foul number 78, late hit, Cincinnati. You guys have 30 minutes. 
to make them pay for everything that happened at first half, to regain three points that were ripped off from you in the first half, and to kick their ass. If you're a man, you'll do it because you got a better team. Let's go! The Bengals were defending champions of the AFC Central, and now even the conservative Cleveland Browns were emulating their wide-open style. The Oilers 32 is a pitch out to Metcalf, and he wants to throw deep for Lang. Orders wide open, touchdown Browns! It's science fiction. Science fiction was a good way to describe Cleveland's dog pound, Houston's house of pain, Cincinnati's jungle, and Pittsburgh's slightly tarnished steel curtain. Chuck Knoll had not been to the playoffs in four years. The team had 12 rookies, and the steel curtain defense was coached by a man named Rod Lust. Needless to say, Pittsburgh lost the first two games of the season by the combined score of 92 to 10. If it weren't so sad, it would have been funny. Number 33, Merrill Hodge and Bubby Brister were willing to try anything. But the offense remained dead last in the NFL for the entire season. Bubby wasn't bragging, but his team hung tough beating Miami in the rain and barely losing to Houston in the snow. The victory left Jerry Glanville one game shy of clinching the division title, but Cincinnati was waiting. Let's go, man. We could blow this game wide open. We have beat him by three touchdowns. You got his ass, Eddie Brown! Fires down in the end zone. Intended yes. Yes. They were cocky and doing all their talking and their coach doing all of his talking and all and they got humiliated. We're going right for their jugular and we weren't going to reset our heel either. <laughs> really, I mean, you, you can only be so stupid, but they have exceeded the limits here somehow. <laughs> you know, they're really, they're a team with no discipline. I knew Sam a long, long time. Uh, I don't think any less of Sam now than I ever did. The following week, Bud Carson and the Browns beat Houston, earning Cleveland the division title and placing every AFC Central team in the playoffs except one. Incredibly, Cincinnati, 5-1 and one in the division, was out. And Pittsburgh, 1-5, and five, was in. The wildcard game looked to be a mismatch. The Steelers against a Houston team that had already beaten them twice. But Pittsburgh had learned some valuable lessons during the long uphill climb. Maestro Charles Knoll had orchestrated another masterpiece. A 26 to 23 overtime upset over a formerly brash team that in three weeks lost to all three of their Central Division rivals. It cost a good man his job. It's well documented what he's done for the city of Houston with the, the, uh, the ill and the uh, homeless. I wish both of them the best of luck. Glanville left the division on his way to coach the Atlanta Falcons as Cleveland carried the colors of the AFC Central into a battle against the Buffalo Bills. Their peers would have been proud of the head knocking. Seconds 
left. Kelly looks over the middle. Fires over the middle. It's intercepted by Kelly Matthews. Cleveland hung on for a 34-30 victory, and the road to the Super Bowl had just one more stop. During the 1980s, the Denver Broncos and the San Francisco 49ers have won the most championships in their respective conferences. In 1989, Denver improved its running game and its defense and posted the best record in the AFC. And as for the 49ers, well, you start with Joe Montana. He's certainly the player of the decade and maybe the greatest quarterback of all time. And he's got those two all-pro receivers, Jerry Rice and John Taylor. Giving those guys to Montana is like arming Superman with a set of brass knuckles. In an age of parody, the 49ers proved it's still possible to put together a dominant team. On the road to Super Bowl 24, Joe Montana never took a false step and scaled the heights of greatness. He completed 70% of his throws for 26 touchdowns, and his passing efficiency rating was the best in NFL history. But statistics cannot convey Montana's uncanny skill. His motion is classical. His delivery, deft. His feet, nimble. His vision, sweeping. Perhaps his greatest gift is the way he recovers from apparently hopeless situations, Against Philadelphia, San Francisco trailed by 11 points in the fourth quarter. But in the final 12 minutes, Montana threw scoring passes to four different receivers and rallied the 49ers to a 38-28 victory. And uh, as long as they're not totally out, you know, and, and they aren't with this ball club, I think we've shown that a number of times. And uh, Joe just, you know, it's just vintage. I mean, he just keeps getting better and better. And, and obviously, we're very, very fortunate to have a quarterback with his skills and his determination and his leadership ability. Under George Seifert's leadership, the defending Super Bowl champions never lost their hunger and remained feisty competitors playing with an intensity that made Seifert the winningest rookie head coach in NFL history. While the 49ers defense played tough and tight, the offense expanded, averaging even more points per game than last year. Jerry Rice again led the team and the league in yards gained receiving. Rice and emerging star John Taylor, number 82, combined for 27 touchdowns, averaged more than 30 yards per scoring catch, and their outside speed put San Francisco on the inside track to success. In the NFC West, it was all one-way traffic on the road to the Super Bowl as the 49ers won the division title and made the playoffs for the eighth time in the decade. He's to midfield, he's to the 40, he's got a blocker in front of him, he's to the 10, he's to the 5, it's a touchdown! John Taylor, another spectacular touchdown! Chance of a lifetime! Ready? Yeah. Today, for the third straight season, the Vikings battle the 49ers here at Candlestick Park in the NFC Divisional Playoffs. The 49ers in the league's top offense against the Vikings in the number one defense. The survivor reaches the NFL's Final Four. The 49ers crushed the Vikings 41 to 13. And the team of the 80s continued their march toward the first Super Bowl of the 90s.
In 1989, the Denver Broncos were no longer a kinder, gentler team. The Bronco defense grew bigger and meaner. You gotta play the defense, you gotta create turnovers. There was also more muscle on offense. Head coach Dan Reeves weeded out the weaklings and sculpted an undersized offensive line into overpowering blockers. While bigger meant better, the Broncos' biggest star had his leanest year. John Elway, more often jeered than cheered, did not have a super season. But rookie running back Bobby Humphrey did. And he gave the Broncos a set of legs as powerful as Elway's arm. Take it over, baby. While Humphrey rushed for 1,000 yards and lifted the Bronco offense to another level, Nothing in the mile-high air moved faster than an Elway pass. Although Elway's statistics were poor, he's never led a team so rich in talent or better balanced. Still, the scales of victory were often tipped by one pull of his right arm. Elway is back, pops up in the pocket, throwing it to the end zone for Vance Johnson, and he has got it for a touchdown. The Broncos were no longer a one-man show when the defense took center stage. Real bullets, five. Real bullets. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. OT! OT! Once the weak sisters of this team, they're coming, they're coming strong, baby! The Bronco defense became the Big Brothers and led the charge to the playoffs. They allowed the fewest points in the NFL. And every starter on defense had at least one sack or interception as Denver led the conference in takeaways. The Broncos ran away from their competitors and clinched the Western crown four weeks before the season ended leaving no doubt about who was the best team in the AFC. In the AFC playoffs, the Broncos had to launch a furious rally to overcome the Cinderella Pittsburgh Steelers. Elway to throw on first down, pumps it, and throws it long, and it's wide open for a touchdown. A step away from the title, the Bronco defense stepped forward. Victory brought the Denver Broncos to the championship game for the third time in four years. I had a game ball on my lap, and we're set to the plane and begin to set. Say again. Clear the field of all threats at the time of first immediately. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bob Starr along with Jack Youngblood. We're at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. It is the NFC Championship game. We're going to set our own standards today. We're not going to play at that level. We're going to establish a level of play that is great, and we're going to maintain it throughout this whole game. Let's go, y'all. Let's go.
Here's the all-out rush, and Elway's pass is complete across the 50-yard line. Throws over the 40, and breaks the tackle. And Missouri trying to cut back left to the 25. Elway rolling out, shoveling to Humphrey, who drops the football, and the Browns have it at the 8-yard line. Second and 10. Bozar drops, throw up the middle, and this one is intercepted. Poorly thrown football by Bertie Kosar that floated over the middle. The NFC Championship game is underway. Montana flips, then passes, and it's complete to Jones. And he fumbles the ball. It is picked up by McIntyre. He fumbles the ball. This time the Rams get it. Come on, man. We need to settle right now. Yeah. Right the hell now. <laughs> Everett puts it on his hip. Throws for the long one. He's got a receiver. Anderson and Ronnie Lott got there just in the nick of time. What a play by Lott. Kosar, play action throw coming up. Deep over the middle. Flying Elway, pick up some of the blitz. John flushed out to the right, throws it upfield for a wide open. Mike Young at the 30, at the 20, at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, 70 yards. Elway to Mike Young. Baylor is to the left against Durbin. Montana steps back, throws for the end zone. up the middle behind Ellert. It is intercepted by McHire after a deflection from Griffin. He's to the 30. He's out of bounds inside the 27 yard line. <laughs> to Roger. Into the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. Montana just knows where everybody's going to be before they get there. And he's like about four or five frames ahead of what you're seeing. Kosar looking over the middle. Pick it up! Pick it up! Throwing deep left side for Bryant. Bryant cuts down Browns! And the Browns are back in the game! No one wants to throw it on first and goal. Mobley touchdown! Danny starts left, has blocked. Dive toward the end zone. Scores! The Broncos now have their biggest lead of the game. goes in motion. Hand off. Madonna, touchdown, Brown. The target tank brings the Browns to within three. Super Bowl Niners, Super Bowl. Remember, no standing around, no buying a ticket. Three and out, baby. Three and out. Four Niners in complete control, and the way they're playing on the field, I tell you, they're just pounding, just pounding the Rams down. Yeah, they own this ball game right now because yeah. the Rams are just almost conceding physically, it seems. Here comes the world. Sewell picks up one. Pass is complete to Winder. 30, 20, 15, 10. Sammy will score. On the road to the Super Bowl, there are many winners, but only two champions. Now they meet for a prize only one can win. Yeah!
Super Bowl 24 marked the Denver Broncos' third trip to pro football's pinnacle since 1987, their fourth trip overall. They had yet to win. The San Francisco 49ers arrived in town as defending Super Bowl champions. Their fourth trip to the big game in nine seasons. They had yet to lose. Bonsoir à tous, nous sommes à la Nouvelle Orléans pour la grande finale du football américain professionnel. 24e du titre opposant les 49ers de San Francisco et les Broncos de Denver. American television depicted the event as a showdown between Bronco quarterback John Elway and 49ers superstar Joe Montana. Ironically, many foreign broadcasters seem to have the matchup in much sharper focus. Vedremo se riuscirà in questo e ovviamente tutto il peso di questo va sulla difesa nel fermare Joe Montana. La traiettoria di Joe Montana di ganare un quarto su Pentazon, algo che solo ha hecho San Francisco 49ers. Qui c'è la nuova è sicuramente ex quarterback Joe Montana. Montana cara Rice, Montana cara Taylor, e poi Montana cara Brent Jones. Et... Joe Montana, the greatest quarterback of them all, do you reckon? Without question, in my opinion, Joe Montana is the best. He made a believer out of me when they played against the Rams a couple of weeks ago. On their first offensive possession, Joe Montana drove the 49ers 66 yards in 10 plays for Super Bowl 24's first touchdown. Montana, straight back drop, three steps, runs out of trouble. He goes up the middle. He's down to the 21 yard line and has a first down for the first. Wow, Rice in this corner! Jerry Rice never did make it all the way to the corner. Unfortunately for Denver, the middle of the end zone counts just as much. Tom Rathman was Montana's primary receiver on the play. Montana's second look was at tight end Brent Jones. With Rice still covered, Montana turned to a fourth receiver, John Taylor, on the far side of the pattern. Finally, he worked his way back to Rice, then watched as Bronco safety Steve Atwater went for the knockout instead of the tackle. So now the Broncos go on offense. It is first and 10 at the 26 yard line. They trail seven to nothing. Bobby Humphrey in the backfield. Elway with a shovel pass to Humphrey. Cuts to his left to the 30, gets to the 35. He's up field. He almost broke it. He's across the 50 in the San Francisco territory at the 47 yard line. Denver's response was a shovel pass to running back Bobby Humphrey that nearly went the distance. The irony was, it would be John Elway's longest pass completion of the afternoon. Here's the snap. Kubiak's got it down. Here's the kick. It is on the way, and it is good. A 42-yard field goal for David Treadwell. And the Broncos are on the board with 6 minutes and 47 seconds to go in the first period. San Francisco 7 and the Broncos 3. Hold on, let's go. Right here, Gene. Right here. Let's keep right let's here. Make the play. Right here. Make the play. Field rush. Five outside. Three. 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 Use your techniques, Bob. Use your techniques. Number 71 Pro Bowl nose tackle Greg Cragen wore a wireless microphone in Super Bowl 24, allowing us to eavesdrop on Denver's defensive efforts. You know it's really 
Bruce. You know it too, Bruce. During the regular season, the Bronco defense allowed the fewest points in pro football. On San Francisco's second offensive possession, Denver shut down Joe Montana and the 49ers. That's the way to work. That's the way to work, man. That's the way to play. I'm telling you. How we play the football? We get them in third down and we make the play. We just make the play in third down. Bratton comes in motion to the right. It's a handoff to Humphrey. He slants over left tackle and Fagan drops him immediately. The ball is loose. The ball is loose. The 49ers believe they have it. It is San Francisco's ball on the fumble by Humphrey. Stripped off and appeared by Fagan. That's all right. Hold up. That's all right. That's just a chance to hit him again. Keep hitting him. Montana puts it on the hip, back to throw, steps up, finds a man over the middle, Jerry Wright to the 45, and he is dragged down right at the first down marker. That's good. Come on. Suck it up. Black 59, Razor. Black 59, Razor. 49, Montana rolls to his right, trying to find somebody open. Wants to throw, does on the run. Coming back for it with Taylor. It's batted away by Braxton. Braxton wouldn't let him catch it. Blue 88. Throws across the middle. Right hands it at the 15. He breaks the tackle of the 10. He's inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the 49ers. Montana rolls to his right, throws to Brent Jones. Great catch. He's into the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. Brent Jones, who Jerry Rice says has the best hands on the team, showed it on that touchdown catch, reaching up to bring it down. And a little different wrinkle. A missed extra point offered Denver little consolation. And for Cragen and the Bronco defense, the worst was still to come. In the second quarter, Denver grew more determined. San Francisco became more diversified. Fullback Tom Rathman moved to the top of San Francisco's play calling chart. Montana drops back to throw. Across the middle, it is caught by Rathman. He slides to the two yard line. First down, he's right at the mark. Joey made a sensational catch. Oh. He reached back one-handed. He got a ball that was a little bit behind him and brought it in. Just sensational catch by Rathman. <laughs> Joe gives it to Rathman. He's into the end zone. Touchdown 49ers with a submarine drive. What's happening, man? The battered Broncos could not seem to fight their way off the ropes. And with 40 seconds left in the first half, they would not be saved by the bell. Pump fake by Montana, launches it for the end zone! Jerry Rice! Oh, what a catch by Rice! Touchdown, 49ers, 38-yard touchdown pass down the middle. San Francisco's well-conceived game plan struck again. Their shell-shocked opponents would now have to live with the consequences. You still, you got to play a whole other half. So, ain't nothing you can do. Beat, man. Get after the Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Amid the offensive fireworks of the first half, one man's role was clearly not what he'd hoped it would be. John Elway's very first pass of the game set the tone.
Elway and the Bronco offense were never in sync. In all fairness to the beleaguered quarterback, Denver's ineffectiveness was not all his fault. Throughout the first half, the 49er defense sniffed out then snuffed out Denver's favorite offensive designs. Witness Charles Haley short-circuiting a shovel pass. Inside linebacker Matt Millen dismantling a sweep. Defensive lineman Pierce Holt and Kevin Fagan chasing down screen passes. San Francisco's dogged defense finally forced a fatal mistake from John Elway. It was Denver's first offensive play of the second half. Elway steps back to throw, and it's intercepted by Michael Walter. He's back to the 27-yard line. Montana drops back to throw, looks over the field, goes for the end zone, Jerry Wright. Some quarterbacks fail to capitalize on opportunity. Joe Montana lives for these moments. And each new angle fosters new appreciation for his deadly precision. to move out. Now he lets it go, throws it downfield, should be picked off, and it is. Chet Brooks is back to the 50. He's down to the 45. He's to the 40, and he steps out of bounds near the 38-yard line. This time, Montana actually wasted a play before wasting the Denver Broncos. Throws for the end zone. Taylor, touchdown, 49 -er. Two interceptions. And two historic touchdown passes drained what little drama remained in Super Bowl XXIV. The showdown had become a one-man show. Sadly, the only matter left to be resolved was whether Denver would become only the second team in Super Bowl history not to score a touchdown. So it is a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Humphrey and Bratton in the backfield. Elway drops back to throw. Goes to the end zone. He's got a receiver, Clarence Kay. And there's a flag on the play. Romanowski has an interception, but will they count it? Indeed, linebacker Bill Romanowski gets an A for effort. But since he was clearly playing the receiver, notice the hand in Clarence Kay's face. His outstanding play was properly ruled face guarding, a form of pass interference, giving the Broncos first and goal on the one. Red 98! Sewell goes in motion, Elway collides with Humphrey, and Humphrey gets it down to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. On the play, guard Doug Widell was supposed to trap San Francisco's Jim Burke. But Burt penetrated so quickly, he disrupted the handoff. Pursuit squashed the play. On second down, Wydell was asked to trap linebacker Charles Haley. But once again, Burt penetrated effectively, driving his man into Wydell's path. 
allowing Haley to mess things up. So now it is third and goal at the three, and Elway will use the shotgun with four every five receivers, two to the left, three to the right. Elway's going to try to run it himself. He gives ground back to the six. He should get in and down. Touchdown, Denver. That's a planned play, quarterback draw. Wanted to run it up the middle, started to go, and that was plugged up. Bounced it outside and got in the end zone. We call a draw before the play. We call a draw. We wait on him, and he takes it outside. The good news for Denver, they'd scored a touchdown. The bad news? There were still 22 minutes left in Super Bowl 24. With defeat staring them in the face, the Denver Broncos now had to be concerned with the historical dimensions of their loss. I tell you what, guys want some more points over there. They're gonna try to run this up on us. They ain't bring the up on us. They're gonna they gonna want some more. They're gonna try to get a six. It's not that the San Francisco 49ers intended to run up the score, but with so many weapons at his disposal and a Super Bowl record for points scored so close, Joe Montana just couldn't avoid it. Montana drops back, looking for the end zone, but instead goes short to Craig. He takes it at the 15, goes inside the 10, and goes down to the 7-yard line before Scott Curtis makes the tackle, and the 49ers have a first and goal after a 12-yard pickup. Shotgun again on second and 11 at the 22. Elway back to throw, has to step out of trouble, being pursued by Pollard and Griffin. Ball is fumbled. 49ers pick it up. Duff brings it back. He's to the one yard line. 49ers will have a first and goal. Matt Millen is telling him to keep his head up. Look at that. Millen went to Elway and said, Come on, don't, uh, don't let us do this to you mentally. Another great defensive play. Another Bronco turnover. Another 49er touchdown. Mercifully, their last in Super Bowl 24. With the big doggy! Baby! Back to back, baby. <laughs> the boy is going to party tonight. Hey! Woo! Here comes Joe out of the ball game. Steve Young comes in, and this gives Joe Montana a chance to get what he deserves, a tremendous ovation from this crowd at the Superdome. And people on their feet, a lot of standing O's out there for Joe Montana's spectacular performance again today. Could very well be his third Super Bowl MVP award. During this ultimate team triumph, one man's performance elevated the play of all those around him. But down here, he went A right or, or C right or left, man, free release, backer. I had like two steps on him. That middle backer slow. He processed his teammates' input, then turned it into touchdowns. His pass catchers barely broke stride. And so it came as no surprise to those who'd witnessed this coronation that Joe Montana was named the game's most valuable player, the crown prince of pro football's royal family. Congratulations for everything. Very, very, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. I'll tell you what, I'm happy for you. I'm really happy. Back to back. Back to back. Back to back. 
Number Zach. one. Back to back to back now. We gotta be satisfied. We wanna get three. That's right. We wanna get three more. See, uh, you know, what do you call it? Three, uh, uh, three P. <laughs> three P. Go for the three P. Do it again. We can do it again. Do it again. Yeah. We can, hey, we go down to Tampa. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by the National Football League. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com.